no concession. I'm Matt Smith, today on Upfront. President Trump contests the outcome of the election. Next, we'll hear from Trump opponent, Democratic Senator Tammy Baldwin, and Trump supporter, former Governor Scott Walker. Then, Wisconsin's election investigation, what a lawmaker expects to find, and COVID out of control. We have to stop this in Wisconsin. Dr. Deborah Burks on what the United States can learn from Europe right now. Taking on the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with your host, Adrian Pedersen. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Upfront. I'm Matt Smith in for Adrian today. We begin with the election drama playing out in Washington and in battleground states across the country, including here in Wisconsin. President Trump still refusing to concede that he lost to Joe Biden has blocked the transition for the president elect. Trump has made unsubstantiated allegations of widespread voter fraud about an election the Department of Homeland Security this week called the most secure in American history. Some prominent Republicans have been giving the president cover, and few Republican senators have even congratulated Biden publicly. Here's what Wisconsin Republican Senator Ron Johnson said last week. Senator, have you congratulated Vice President Biden yet? Why not? By this weekend, however, some GOP senators said the president-elect should be receiving his national security briefing. All of this happening as COVID-19 rages across Wisconsin and much of the nation. We're talking now with Wisconsin Democratic U.S. Senator Tammy Baldwin. Senator, good to see you. Your, your counterpart in the Senate, Senator Johnson, in recent days has now said he has no problem with president-elect Biden receiving those national security briefings. What does this tell you about the state of the transition? Well, certainly uh, our national security really depends upon an orderly and smooth transition and the president-elect, Joe Biden, getting these daily briefings that the president uh, of the United States is privy to. Um, and so uh, I want them to start uh, and I want uh, to also see the resources and tools that are customarily made available to the president-elect uh, made available and that uh, the, the uh, dragging of feet is uh, injurious to our nation yeah. and uh, want to see that transition uh, take place with the resources that are allocated for it. The canvas across the state is expected to end on Tuesday. What gives you confidence there is no widespread fraud in these results? Well, a, a number of things. First of all, uh, Wisconsin um, has a very, very transparent um, vote counting uh, mechanism. Um, we have uh, the control of uh, tallying the votes at the local municipal level and then reviewed, obviously, by the counties during their canvas. And, um, you know, even in the canvas, there's been very little change in terms of uh, vote totals. Uh, and we heard from the Department of Homeland Security uh, this week that this was probably the most secure uh, election that's ever been run in the United States. Uh, so, you know, kudos to Wisconsin voters who uh, participated in record numbers uh, in this election in the midst of a raging pandemic um, for uh, demanding that their voice be heard, that their vote be counted, and um, kudos also to the election officials who meticulously and carefully uh, conduct uh, those uh, th that election and uh, count those votes. We're still seeing lawsuits in key battleground states. Do you fear this election will end up before the U.S. Supreme Court? Um, I don't at this juncture. I think it is uh, clearer with every passing day that uh, the um, votes are being carefully tallied, tallied that this was a secure and um, a, a secure and fair election and that Joe Biden is indeed president elect and will be sworn in on uh, January 20th. There's been a lot of alarms raised by Democrats, Republicans, healthcare professionals, business owners that CARES Act funding will expire at, at the end of the year. How much pressure are you facing as we sit here today to work with Republicans to pass any type of relief package? Well, I um, have stood ready to pass uh, COVID uh, relief uh, since uh, the uh, House passed the HEROES Act in mid-May. Um, that was a comprehensive 
uh, follow on to the CARES Act. And I have strongly supported it and also strongly supported negotiations between the administration and Congress in order to uh, find a, a compromise package if, they, uh, if, if Mitch McConnell continues to refuse to bring up the HEROES Act. But I think it is urgent. I think it should have been done yesterday. And with these impending additional deadlines, we've seen others come and pass uh, related to unemployment uh, benefits and others. But with these new impending deadlines, it's very urgent that we act uh, before the end of the year. Senator McConnell has said in recent days he does not support, as he said before, the Democrats' price tag. He's looking maybe something near $500 billion. Republicans were trying to pass that before the election. Would you, would you sign on to something, a, a smaller package that Republicans would propose? You know, I think that um, we have divided government right now. We have a democratically controlled House, a Republican controlled Senate, and a Republican president. Our work product must be the product of bipartisan negotiations for it to get through the entire process. But let me talk about the desperate needs. Um, right now, with the coronavirus raging in Wisconsin, records being broken almost on a daily basis, um, we definitely need to uh, surge in additional capacity um, in our hospital systems in order to turn the corner on the uh, coronavirus. We need uh, additional testing capacity, uh, surveillance testing capacity. Um, so we need a, a very sizable investment in public health and our health systems. But to get there, you're willing to negotiate? Absolutely. That's how things work. Senator Tammy Baldwin, Democratic U.S. Senator from Wisconsin. Senator, always good to see you. Thank you. Great to see you. Thank you. The Trump campaign still says it will seek a recount in Wisconsin. Next, I'll ask former Republican Governor Scott Walker about the president's endgame. Wisconsin, this is serious. The crisis is urgent. Governor Tony Evers pleading for people to take COVID precautions, how other countries are bringing their current cases down.